Welcome back, everybody, to your three-man booth. We've got NFL debate. I'm Dan Salem with Phil and Bud. And this is going to be an AFC preview. Guys, football's heading towards the season on schedule. And we're going to start in the AFC where Bud and I are Jets fans. He's got his Rangers jersey on, shirt on, but that's cool. Before I let them talk, I'm going to make a really bold, crazy statement, and then I'm going to shut up and see what they have to say about it. The AFC would appear to be Kansas City and Baltimore's on paper. And sure, just pencil in the chalk. I think that this season is going to be wacky and unpredictable, and I really think upsets, neither one of them are going to make it to the Super Bowl for the AFC. I'm not even sure either one win their division. I will give you my teams that will upset them later. But, guys, what's your thoughts on what I said in the AFC this year? Well, we haven't, had a re- we haven't had a repeat Super Bowl champion since the Patriots did it back in the early 2000s. So we know how hard it is to win back-to-back Super Bowls. Now, is Kansas City poised and ready to go to do that? It appears they are, but it, again, it's it's really hard to do. Um, Baltimore was right there. They were they were. They, it seems like they're the the up and coming team. It's it's hard to not pick the chalk, but as we know, Vegas makes a lot, a lot of money because people take chalk all the time and take those surefire, what they think are surefire bets. So, I well, Phil, Phil, you picked chalk, you yeah. picked chalk last season, and you picked Kansas City, and that was a solid move. Are you still behind them this year? <sighs> as of right now, yes. As of right now, yes. Okay. I still have a few more weeks to go. You know, it sucks, too, because with no preseason, you know, we don't get a look at any of these new guys coming in, and, and maybe some guy flashes, and, you know, maybe a team gets a little – I don't know. You just – you see the way new players act in, new, in different places. We're not going to see any of that this year. So it's really tough. It's really – we're basically going off of last year, which you're not supposed to do in um, fantasy. You're not supposed to do in regular – you're not supposed to do any – the past is the past, and it means nothing, but this year we have nothing else to go by. I wrote an article today about the Jets – and I had to reference last season like it meant something because we have nothing to go off of. Right. It's, but it's true, though. We, we don't have – you're not going to have that. I mean, you, you look at these guys, these beat writers, you're getting nothing at a training camp. I've heard nothing out of at a Giants camp besides Jason Garrett likes Daniel Jones. That's about it. Yeah. All right, bud. Floor is yours. <laughs> I would I, – I, I actually agree with Phil. I think uh, they're just – they're stacked on paper. Um, I, I, unless somebody, um, uh, to your point, Dan, unless unless somebody comes up and 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 plays spoiler, they I I just think that they have way too many weapons, way too many weapons. I think I think if Tennessee can kind of repeat what they did last year and and really ride Derrick Henry, that could be something that you you might want to watch out for. I don't know if Tannehill can play nearly as good as he played last year. I mean, we, unless yeah, he's yeah. kind of found himself in Tennessee, but. I Kansas City's defense is, is way way improved from two years ago. I mean, that's part of the reason why they, they won the Super Bowl last year. And it, it, there's just there's just too many weapons on offense. And Mahomes is is it, if the team stays healthy and they have no COVID and nothing you know really kind of goes awry with them, I I don't see how they they don't win again. I really don't. Okay, so, so this is why I'm picking against Kansas City. I, I, I think this year, because of the situation, they don't have their home field advantage at Arrowhead, most likely. Now, maybe they'll let fans in, maybe they won't. Jerry Jones says he's going to let all the fans at every game. Of course he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but, but so home field advantage is kind of gone. Now, you, you, you have a comfort level. You get to sleep at, at your house as opposed to a, a hotel, which you can't leave, and you're going to fly in and out. So the travel – I think the wackiness of the travel – is going to really put the onus on a veteran. Now, Mahomes just won a Super Bowl, so he's got that. And they do have a solid veteran team. But they don't have a running game that I feel confident in. And their defense had a down year and an up year, and I'm not sure if they can keep it up or not. And we'll, and we'll really see. I like somebody like Pittsburgh, who is in the middle of nowhere, has a veteran quarterback probably playing his last season, going to throw all his marbles into the hat, they got a huge chip on their shoulder because everyone's written them off, and they don't normally play solid defense. I like the Chargers for similar reasons because they finally got rid of Phillip Rivers, and it's a fresh start for them. And if their quarterback's halfway decent, that team could be way better than we think and maybe finally be as good as we thought they were going to be. I'm kind of 
skeptical on Baltimore because I don't know if Lamar Jackson can keep it going. He's been great. I don't think he should. Keep, I don't think he should keep it going in the sense that no. he shouldn't be running as much. So it, naturally, those numbers should regress. Like he, he's not going to last very long. And if he's going to keep playing the way he played last year, it was awesome to watch. Don't get me wrong, but the shelf life of a quarterback that does that, we've seen time and time again. You know, Cam and New, and um, uh, I guess Russell Wilson's the exception because he kind of well, he's he amazing. He <laughs> but I feel like the, I feel like those running quarterbacks don't tend to last as long as a pocket passer. Obviously, Russell Wilson really struck a balance. So that's that's helped him. I, yeah, I think this I think this season is about the superstars, and so it, it's hard for me to discount Mahomes. He's a superstar. Um, Dan, you Dan, it's not to cut you off, but you didn't mention anything about Indianapolis. I don't know how to read on them. I really don't. I, I want them to be good, but well, I mean, I think last year last year was kind of one of those years. I mean, Andrew Luck retired five days before the season. You know, I, I think if Andrew Luck had played last year. Indianapolis would have been one of the favorites to win the Super Bowl. And I think now that they have a veteran quarterback behind what is arguably, what, a top three offensive line, an underrated defense, solid running game, um, definitely has weapons on the outside, especially on uh, on wide receiver tight end. You know, if, if Phillip Rivers can cut down on the turnovers and play smart football rather than just chuck the ball up like he does, like yeah. he used to do in, in L.A., San Diego, that, that would be a team that I, I would think that, could certainly um, make a case to winning a oh. what we think is a, is a somewhat mediocre uh, AFC South, right? Yeah, no, I know. I that's a really good point because uh, Philip Rivers too has got a lot to prove starting in a new location, uh, and Indianapolis did have a really good running game and solid defense. I know we're all dancing around the AFC's bullet. Um, my article today was about Le'Veon Bell. If he can play like a superstar, the Jets are a real a team to be afraid of this season because like I think this is a season about stars. I don't know if he'll pull it off. I don't I don't believe in Buffalo or Miami personally. New England scares me, but again, that's like a hot cold situation. It, it could be really good, they could be really bad. So I, I, I intentionally avoided that division. I don't know New England I, New England's gonna be a shell of themselves. That they lost seven legitimate starters on defense. I mean it's their defense isn't going to be nearly as good as it was last year, unless Belichick can somehow pull a rabbit out of his hat. Um, yeah, I don't. I I definitely think Buffalo is a better team on paper than New England is. You don't know what you're going to get out of Cam, and if Cam isn't going to play, who who's the who's the quarterback? Stidham. He threw three passes last year. One of them was an interception, Jamal Adams that he returned, and then he pulled him out of the game. And the New England was already winning forty nothing. So the, the Patriots were trying to tank the season, right, by, by putting him in there, or do they really like the guy? Because he was going to be their starter until they just – unless they were just waiting on Cam Newton's price to drop. I, I mean – Well, it certainly I mean, dropped. It yeah, I mean, it was it, – that's, that's low risk, complete low risk. for. I mean, you're getting, what, for a million dollars? Yeah. They've made a yeah. couple of signings, but they're all low risk moves, probably because all the players are opting out. I know, I know we haven't reached the opt-out deadline yet, and nobody – I thought no, we, we had. It was Wednesday. It was oh, last oh, week. Oh, Wednesday. It was really. Oh, they moved it up. You're right. Okay. Last right. week. Last Wednesday. Okay. So then, no, nobody, no superstars opted out. There are a lot of. I didn't see any. I, I didn't. But, I didn't think that was going to happen. CJ yeah. mostly. CJ mostly opted out. I mean, you would have to think that he's. He's. I, he's he's not a superstar, but he's. He's. I mean, he's probably the Jets' best player, even though he didn't play anything last year. Yeah. So, I, I heard an interesting thought. And I know we're getting on the uh, the COVID down. We're going that rabbit hole, but I'll say it quick. So someone goes, all right, if you opt out, you get $150,000, right? right? If you don't opt out and you get injured and you sit out a bunch of games, you get your full salary. So we may be seeing a lot of injuries during the, over the course of the season. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You got to get the team doctor to buy in, but you're right. Well, but, but, no, but you could be like, oh, I tweaked my hamstring or, you know, soft tissue issue. You, you can't, you know, you can't prove that. So it's, it was an interesting thought. I, I didn't think of that until till it was mentioned. Would you rather sit on the sideline injured or actually be playing? No, no, no. These are the people who are like, I'm not sure I want to play due to health reasons. What's another way to get my full salary without – you know, making it look like I opted okay. out. Well, I think the reason they opted out was because they didn't, they didn't think the whole season would happen. And then they don't want to lose half their money. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't they know. They only get paid for the game played. Played, but... So if they only play a month, they're only going to get paid for a month. 
But the players that defer their their contract till next year, they don't get paid this year, but at least they their contract's still valid. It starts next season. So you know, it's a very interesting decision. I actually thought more players might make that decision for that reason, but maybe that's why the Cowboys went franchise tag because they don't think the whole year will play out. <laughs> Uh, I think they did that for a different reason, but that's yeah. for a different topic. All right, that, that's next next video. All right, back to the AFC. Okay, so so we'll, let's go around the division then. We'll start with the hard one, the AFC East. I I, I mean I, I personally think it's Jets or Patriots. I don't. I just have a feeling the Bills are due for a down year. I know they just upped their coach. I know they have the right pieces in place, but something about Buffalo just always makes me feel like they they fall. They come up. They consistently come up short, and. I don't, I don't have a, an answer of New England or Jets. It's kind of a toss-up. I feel like that's a 9-7, and 10-6 and six division. But they have more pieces, in my opinion. And I do expect Belichick to pull that rabbit out of his hat. But I know you're against the Patriots. So you, do you like Buffalo? You never I do. The Jets. <laughs> I, I, I never picked the Jets, obviously, as, as everybody knows. Um, I do like Buffalo. I just think that they have a top three defense, um, a quarterback that – has the arm, has has that. Listen, if it wasn't for a second-half collapse, Buffalo wins that that playoff game against Houston. And, you know, and, and then maybe we're talking about Buffalo as, as being a little bit more legitimate than than just kind of a write-off one-and-done kind of deal. I think Stefan Diggs is is definitely going to bring an outside threat, definitely speed down, down the field to, to, with a quarterback that can chuck the ball down the field. I mean, if you have a weak cornerback play, which – Let's be honest. The Jets have weak cornerback play. The Patriots have weak cornerback play because two of their two of their starters just bailed. Um, Stephon Diggs has got to play them t- two times a year. I mean, he's going to burn them each time. So, um, I think if the defense plays the way that, the, that they have the potential of doing, if the quarterback can stay healthy and utilize the new weapons with a decent running game, a, a decent offensive line, um, I, I think you know Buffalo went what. 14, no, 13 and 3, 12 and 4 last year. Yeah. 11 and 5, something, something like that. It, it, they had a winning record. Um, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's certainly, it's certainly doable, I think. Okay. And I'm just not so, I'm just not sold on what kind of cam you're going to get. And um, I think Miami's still a couple of years away. I think Fitz is going to get the start and then two is probably going to make his way in sometime later in the year. I think it would be foolish to start two right away. I mean, you don't know what that hip's going to be like. Yeah, and I think you know Fitz played really well for them, and I think this team is comfortable with him being the starter. And as for the Jets, I mean the Jets are a crapshoot. I mean I have, you know, they had the worst offense in the league last year. They just lost Jamal Adams. They just lost their their, um, you know, starting inside linebacker and CJ Mosley. Um, they have, they can't get any pressure to the quarterback. Their offensive line is completely rebuilt. Um, yeah, we got to concern about there's no. I know. <laughs> Are you concerned about the Whites? No Robbie Anderson, no Quincy Nunwa. I know he didn't play last year, but he's he's not coming back. Robbie See, Anderson's gone. Well, that that's why I put everything on Le'Veon Bell personally, because I think the tight ends are pretty good. But Bell's Bell should be the biggest pass threat if he's playing up to his level. Yeah, but Dan, you're 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 creating the same situation that they created last year. I mean, their their offense was so predictable that everything went Le, went to Le'Veon Bell unless. Unless Gase can become creative, which he said, he said today or yesterday or whatever, that he's going to be more creative with using Le'Veon. Listen, yeah. how many games did you watch last year where they stacked nine guys in the box and they couldn't, so, they couldn't do crap? It's, I, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah. Last season for me, the Jets had an atrocious offensive line. So they didn't have a lot of options on what to do because you had to, you had to constantly scheme around the holes in the line which really only left them to run the ball a couple places, and they were extremely predictable because of it. And the fact that they managed to win seven games is extremely encouraging to me because of that. So, I mean, I'm seeing the silver lining there. I don't know how the hell they pulled seven wins out of there, but with that, that offensive line and that, that predictable offense. Um, I think that the offensive line can only be better. The team had more injuries than we're ever going to see them have ever again in a season outside of players having to leave because of the virus this year, which is totally going to make everything up in the air. I'm willing to give Gase the benefit of the doubt because it was his first year in the offense. It was the quarterback's first year with the offense. It was everybody's first year with the offense. And he does like to run a really, really challenging offense, and he didn't because he didn't feel like his quarterback could handle it. 
Now, if it all goes to crap this year, he should get fired because he's not the right he's not the right coach for that quarterback. But Darnold's a smart guy. I think we should we should see something something pretty that'll make us happy as fans at least. I hope so. Phil, are, are we fair to write off the Dolphins? I think Bud's right. I think they're a couple years away, but I mean, they had a ton of draft picks. Uh, maybe they surprise. Who knows? I, I, you, you don't get that feeling at the moment again because we're not going to see any of these guys play. I don't. I, I agree with Bud. You're not going to see two or for at least I don't know, three or four weeks, maybe more. But yeah, it's 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 all going to come together. It's just going to take a little time. Yeah. If it's if Fitz is playing well, you're not going to see Tua. I mean, they're not going to rock the right. boat too much. I mean, it's there's there's no. There's no sense in rushing this kid if he's going to be your franchise quarterback and he's coming off the injury that he that he came off of. There's no need to throw him into a fire on a bad team, or if the team is winning, it just don't don't rock it. I mean, just just let it ride. It, especially if Dan is right and this division is winnable. Um, why why do that? Why 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 sacrifice a year to get him to play? Um, yeah, so we usually see a ton of injuries in August. We're going to get those in September without the preseason. And then is October going to be when things finally start to come together, or is it going to be November? Because it's usually October under regular circumstances. I'm just so – I have this feeling down here that whatever we think is going to happen is absolutely wrong because this, these circumstances are really going to have to change teams' approach, and we don't know how yet. We haven't seen them. And no one's talking. So it's like it's way too quiet, and it makes me feel like this is going to be a completely anomalous season. I mean, that's what's happening in baseball. Outside of the Yankees dominating, whichever I, I mean, I pretty much expected. Everything's kind of going a little haywire. Hockey, everything's a little bit wacky. The top teams are not necessarily the ones playing the best under these circumstances. I think the NBA is the exception. But let's move into another division. I don't know. I just have this feeling like <laughs> what we think we know is wrong. But I don't have a good anything to back it up. We don't have enough information. Uh, what, what do you think? And it's AFC North next. I'll start with one of you guys. Sure. Yeah. Okay. You're also welcome to debate me on my eerie feeling in the pit of my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Phil. AFC North. What do you What do you think? This is Cleveland's year? Uh, no, I, 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 I think, I think, I. Th- I want to say I, I want to say Pittsburgh. I really do. I think they got they stay they they obviously they underwhelmed. Ton of injuries. Ben didn't play. Everyone's gonna to want to pick the Browns. I, I know that Baker's there and Beckham's there and Chubb is there and Hunt is there and they got rid of uh, Kitchens and and everything's you know they were the sexy pick last year. Bud picked me to go to the Super Bowl last year. I think so. He was well, on the. No, I did Don't <laughs> <going on. laughs> You're talking silly. They were they were everyone's you know team to team to to you know fly, fly high and they ended up you know, <laughs> what what they go nine and seven I forget what it was but they didn't um, they did not fulfill expectations. I can't for the life of me remember the fourth team in that division. <laughs> Cincinnati. Oh, there we go. Oh, right, because they don't count. <laughs> Joe Burrow. Yeah. You almost forget that they're around. <laughs> yes. I'm sure, a lot of people feel that way about the Jets. Um, is it just me, or have we seen the best of Baker Mayfield? I don't have a lot of confidence in him getting any better. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, if if he doesn't play well this year, I mean, Cle- is Cleveland going to have to go through this again with another quarterback? They've had 20 quarterbacks in the last 22 years. I, you know, I think I think there's no there's no excuse for Cleveland this year. I really don't because. They have a good defense. They have weapons on offense. They think that they have their franchise quarterback. Their offensive line is ab- above average. Um, I mean, there's there's no excuse. Now, if Lamar Jackson does what he did last year, there's no stopping Baltimore. That, that's just it's, – it's that simple. If nobody can contain him and he can chuck the ball wherever he wants and he can run around defenses, it's, it's Baltimore's division to lose. I agree with Bill Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh could make a little bit of a run. I think Ben has something to prove. I think people write write them off, and Tomlin's a hell of a coach, and he's going to figure out something. Um, you know, John Connor is going to have to have a bounce back here. He wasn't very good last year at all. But again, you're playing with a bunch of scrubs last year. 
and all mostly all backups. And Pittsburgh's defense is pretty good. It's always been good. Yeah. Um, is this Ben's last season? You think? No, I don't. I, th- I think he wants to play another two or three years. The question is whether or not he's going to be playing those in Pittsburgh, or is it going to be a Tom Brady situation where they ha- they kind of basically say it's time for us to move on? But you know, Rudolph's same situation as New England. I mean, who who is the heir? Who's the who's the heir apparent? They, they don't wanted, they don't have they wanted it, Rudolph, but I don't think I don't think he's ready. I think he proved last year that he's probably not the not the guy. I mean. Over in the AFC South, we got four teams that could be really good or really bad. Uh, I do think Bud was onto something with the Colts. I'm not ready to completely write off Jacksonville, but they Most look like are. a dumpster fire. So, um, and then Tennessee, obviously, the surprise team last year. Can they pull it together? I mean, running backs aren't known for their consistency and longevity. And Derrick Henry was a surprise. Well, Derrick Henry is also built like a truck, so he, he might be able to handle the workload. But where was he the year before? I don't remember. And he wasn't. Yeah, he's always been like a little inconsistent. But I mean, I think last year, at the end of the year prior, and all of last year, I think he kind of proved that he could certainly be the workhorse that 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 teams are looking for. Yeah, and I know I know Vrabel's trying to run like a Patriot style. Uh, sorry to cut you off, though. So I, I think that that's working for them. No, I was gonna say with the and with the emergence of AJ Brown last year, out of literally out of nowhere. Um, you know, as long as Tannehill can get him the ball, that, that, kid, that kid's going to be awesome to watch. Yeah, and, and Tannehill's always been good if he stayed healthy. So I wasn't shocked, shocked that he had a good season last year. It was his first healthy season in a while. You um, think Miami's kicking themselves for getting rid of Tannehill or not? Probably not, but. No, they had burned each other's bridges. It's, the story is old as time. One player needs out and the team needs them to leave. <laughs> it's weird. Tennessee's that team just like, eh, they can go seven and nine or they can go 12 and four like you just you don't you, I don't have a feeling about Tennessee like they're always right in the middle they're always hovering on eight and eight so they're going to be above eight and eight or below it it's yeah. like they can you can see you can make cases for both like you don't be like all right they're going to be two and 14 like the like we think Jacksonville is going to be it's just I don't have a I don't have a read on Tennessee they're just they're right there I feel the same about Houston because while they made some terrible moves this offseason they still have Deshaun Watson who is excellent and let's uh, trapped in a head scratch, and I agree. He, uh, it's it's not. It's a tough crazy. situation though because you, you lose your number one target. And hey, listen, we saw Pittsburgh lose Antonio Brown. We saw the Giants lose Odell Beckham. So we've seen this is the third team. I mean, arguably a, a year or two ago, those were the top three receivers in the league. Yeah. And all three of them got moved. One at boom, boom, boom. One after another. Yeah, you're right. And I, I know Watson's good and all, but you can't win without weapons. Uh, we'll, we'll grab Bud's thoughts on that when he gets back, but let's quickly jump into the AFC West, which is Kansas City's to lose for obvious reasons. Uh, yeah, it's, it's as of right now, as we sit, you know, mid mid August, until we see something that's going to change our mind, it's it's got to be Kansas City right now on paper. It's we can speculate and we can make probably a case, but you know, we know yeah. we know the defending champs. Well, yeah, and I mean. I like the LA Chargers. I want them to be better, but they lost their two best players in Gordon and Philip Rivers. So yeah. it's tough. Now they got a great defense, but I can't can't pick them over the Chiefs. And I don't I don't believe in the Broncos or the Raiders personally for better than eight and eight. So yeah, not yet. Um, I guess I guess that that leaves us. So so if if I was going to sum up what we said, I'm not sure Bud's coming back tonight. But that's okay. Peace, Bud. Uh, we, we we like Kansas City, Tennessee, Buffalo, and Pittsburgh, Baltimore. and Baltimore. That's pretty and much Baltimore and Pittsburgh. That's pretty much chalk. I mean, there's one. Yeah. Extra, there's, there's two extra wild cards there because we have an extra one this year, which is why I kind of like Indianapolis and the Jets grabbing them. Or I mean, Indianapolis and the Chargers maybe. Yeah. Well, when we do our prediction show, I'll, we'll definitely be able to yeah. dive more into this and and, yeah. and make our cases. We'll save that till right before the season because we got to get yeah. we got to preview the NFC. So, w- without Bud's opinion to circumvent our homerism, I'll only call it homerism because it's like, what else are you going to say about shock right now? What do you think about the year in general? Like, and keep it with an AFC focus. Do you, do you see it? Like, we're talking like it's going to play out like most seasons do, but we're not seeing that in other sports, and we haven't. I'm just, I, I want to be optimistic about it, and that's that's. I just I, I feel we're gonna play all the games, and 
the chips are going to fall where they may. I, that's, I'm just going to be optimistic yeah. about it. Thanks for watching Buzz Chop. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. share. Woo.